Hi everybody and welcome to today's video. Today I'm doing an ink review from the German brand Lamy, one of the most famous fountain pen and ink brands on the planet. Uh, known for their special editions and you know the the you know everything from the Lamy Safari through the Lamy 2000 and a bunch of pens and inks. Uh, and uh, a couple of years ago, last year, they released the new Crystal line of inks, which is their premium inks. And today we're reviewing one of those. We are looking at Azurite. So. This is the way the ink uh, comes packaged in a really nice box. It gives you some sort of sense of the color. I'll show you a few different on a few different papers and things like that. Um, nice cardboard box. Uh, you open that up and you the pen with the ink is in a little uh, piece of cardboard there packaging. Nice to keep it safe. Um, and this is the bottle you get. This is a 30 ml bottle. It's a crystal ink made in Germany. Uh, and it's a really nice bottle. It's small, um, but you know, it's sort of, yeah. It's great. Um, the only issue might be when the ink starts to get low, uh, unlike the traditional Lamy bottles which have the little um, dip in the bottom so you can put your nib into it, uh, you might start to find it a little bit tricky to fill from this uh, down the line. Um, so there's no, no one on the bottle is it labeled what ink is actually in here, other than the little band around the top of the bottom of the cap just there. Now, I'll take this off to show you the uh, so you can get a sense of the, the ink colour. There you go. Um, beautiful sort of uh, rich, um, uh, bluey purple sort of colour. Um, well, I wouldn't say sapphire-y sort of blue, but it's pretty close in a lot of ways. Uh, and you might also be able to pick up there on the bottle a little bit of sheen, sort of an interesting sort of greeny gold sheen, which you'll definitely see right now. Here it is on some cardstock. Now, you do get a sense of the blue and the purple sort of coming through, but there's a lot of heavy green sheen. Now this is done putting down a lot of ink, so you're not going to get this much in the writing, as you can see there from the actual writing sample. There's hits of it, um, but not a lot. And this is done with a broad Twisby Eco, which you'll be seeing it in in just a second on the writing sample. But you can see lovely colour, and when you do get some sheen, it is quite beautiful. It's a highly saturated ink, it's really quite... Um, yeah, it, it, in this sort of current trend for high saturation sheen, this comes out pretty well. Let's look at some chromatography to get a sense of that. So here is that. Now, as you can see, I drew a line down here, and most of the ink was taken up, and we get pinks, purple, and then a really very dark purple, almost black at the top. So there's not a lot of blue um, to sort of get that sort of sapphire -y sort of color that you can see in there, in the lighter shading, um, but it is, you know, a nice sort of rich sort of purple and a nice chromatography. Now let's look at it on Rhodia. So here we have it on Rhodia 80 gram paper. Now I was using two pens for this, so I used a Twisby Eco with the broad and a Faber-Castell Loom with the extra fine. Now this is a relatively wet extra fine. If you have this in a drier pen, you're gonna get a lot more of the lighter shading, um, but it is all apparent here on the page anyway. So it's at Lamy Crystal Azure. Uh, here on the swab there even, there's a lot of sheen happening, um, but you don't see a lot of that sort of in the writing um, on this paper. Uh, so with the, the broad nib, you get a very dark, thick line, uh, but a lot of that still carries through into the lighter. You just get a little, into the uh, finer nibs, you just get a little bit more shading, which is quite nice. Um, it is a very rich ink, really. Um, and just as a comparison sake, so here I've got Lamy Azurite, followed by Waterman Serenity Blue, and then Ackermann Violet. So you sort of get a quite a, 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 a nice purple, a nice blue, and you can see that the Azurite fits somewhere in the middle there. Um, it's a really nice and very interesting colour. In fact, when uh, the line was released, I sampled all of the inks. I think there's 10 of them. Uh, and a few of them really popped out for me. Some of them feel a little undersaturated. I'm going to do a few more reviews. But, um, yeah, there's. I think there are three there that uh, are really going to be very, very popular inks. Now, we're going to do a water test, <coughs> as usual. Sorry. Um, uh, I'll put some water down. I'll show it on some other paper, and then we'll see um, some sort of a, of my little uh, my scoring, if you will. So let's put this water down. Let's move that around a little bit. All right. Let's look at it on some other paper. Let's start from the bottom up. So here it is. On this is really standard. 
student note paper. So you can see there's a little bit of feathering, uh, but not, you know, not excessive, I would say. Um, you know, it looks good in both, in both pens. It's still nice, rich and dark. And then uh, if we look at the other side of the page, you see that, yes, there's a bit of feathering, but this is, you know, the, that Twisby is pretty wet, really. Um, and as is the Faber-Castell. And so you do get a bit of bleed coming through, but this is not fountain pen friendly paper. This is sort of the cheapest uh, note paper that you can sort of really get. Next, I have it on plain copy paper. So this is 80 gram uh, reflex copy paper. And you can see already the ink performs better. Um, there's not a lot of shading, I have to say. It sort of, it does, it, it, like there's a little bit sort of there on the, on the cross hatch, but it's really pretty, um, it's pretty saturated and pretty dark, and I actually really quite like that. Um, and on the reverse, there's still a little bit of bleed happening, uh, but it's really not too bad. It's mostly where sort of we do put down quite a lot of ink. Next, we'll see it on Tomal River paper. This is in a Hobonichi Weeks. Um, and so you can see there that there's a, you see a little bit more of the shading because the ink sort of tends to sort of pull a little bit, and you do see some of the sheen you can see there on Crystal. Uh, and you actually get it in both pens. Uh, so, uh, and they're sort of in the little um, scribbles, and they're in sort of a slightly more sort of extreme squiggle. We see quite a lot of the sheen happening around the edge. It's not sheening like, um, say, uh, some of those organic studio inks where it's just like a complete sheen. It's sort of more like where the ink pools. Um, but yeah, I think it actually looks really nice on this paper. Tom River does tend to sort of draw the, draw the colour out of inks uh, occasionally, so it looks a bit dull, but this still looks really nice and vibrant. And if we look at the reverse, it's performed really well. Like, only there where we put a heap of ink do we get any bleed. So, uh, quite, quite, yeah, quite happy with, with that. Let's now look at this water sample here. Water test. Let's soak up that water. And as we can see, as we would expect after seeing the chromatography, not a lot is left behind, which, you know, is a bit of a shame. Uh, I think of this colour with sort of some permanence would be great. I don't think this can, I think we have to say that the water resistance of this ink is very low. There's a little bit of that pink left behind, but uh, I think if you got your paper too wet or if you uh, put anything on it, I think you'd be really struggling to, uh, like you look through the numbers there, really struggling to say that anything was uh, salvageable. So here in the scoring, I'm going to just quickly mark that. Water is very low. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, this little scoring now. Okay, saturation is excellent. Dry time, this is rhodia paper. As you can see, it's sort of around the 25 second mark. Sheen is medium to high. So in these big swabs and things like that, you'd have to say that's sort of high sheening. Uh, but in the writing samples, as you can see, even as you see here, it's not really coming up. So medium high, I think. Shading is low. Shimmer, this is not a shimmering ink. Wetness and flow is very good. Um, I'm just going to quickly do just a little writing sample just here so you can sort of see it in action. I'll, do use, I'll use both pens. So we've got, uh, we'll just write, this is Lamy Crystal. As you write, and then I'll just do a little thing like that, and we will smudge that. So nice wetness, nice you know, nice flow out of the pen. These are both pretty smooth nibs, uh, but the ink performs really nicely. Really can't complain about that. Okay, back to here, when it's a flow, yeah, very good. Cleaning is, it's fair. This is a saturated ink, it didn't stain. I had this in a, uh, um, a Jinhao 992 for a little bit, didn't stain anything, converter was clean, all of that, not a problem, the feed fine. Uh, it just takes a little bit sort of extra to wash it out because it is quite saturated. Uh, water resistance, as we said, very low. Uh, feathering is low. Uh, I'd say there's a little bit on sort of cheaper end paper, but you're going to expect that anyway. Bleed the same, good. On like if we look here on the back of the uh, the Rodeo, like nothing has come through, um, you know, and that's with the 
the broader nib and all of that. So really quite happy with that. Um, on decent paper, you're not going to have a problem with bleed. On lower end paper, you're going to have a problem with any ink, let's be honest. Um, value. Okay, so this is 16 US uh, dollars for 30 mils, which is, as I said, this bottle. Um, so, you know, it's okay value. It's a more premium ink. Um, in Australia, it's around $30 a bottle, uh, knowing that the regular... So in Australia, it's $30 for a you know, 30 mil, whereas the traditional Lamy 50 mil bottle uh, comes in at about $20. So it is a more premium priced ink, uh, but you are getting a different... I think uh, a few of these inks perform a lot better than the standard Lamy line of inks. Things like Dark Lilac was a great ink. Petrol, I think, is a really good ink. Lamy Black is great, uh, but sort of like some of the blues, the greens, they're a little... they're not necessarily the most exciting inks on the planet. So let's now do this scoring. So I'll start with overall, uh, which is where I think the how the ink sort of performs in general across this. And I have to say, this is um, a very good ink. And I'm going to give it a score um, of 4 out of 5. And in terms of my personal taste, I'm actually going to give it a 4.5 out of 5 because this colour is really, really uh, in my in my uh, wheelhouse here. It's it's one of those sort of dark bluey purpley sort of colors that just really works for me. Um, I think it's really good ink for professional use. You could easily get away with using this, um, but it's also got a bit of personality on the page, uh, so you don't lose uh, too much sort of in, um, uh, too much personality when you're writing with it. So if you wanted something that pops a little bit, you could have that here as well. Hope you found this video interesting. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at, at the underscore offstage underscore me, uh, or you can drop me a message there or on my email or on any of my videos here. If you've got products you think I should be looking at, let me know. Or if there's a way you'd like to support the channel, get in touch and let's see what we can do. In the meantime, enjoy your inks, enjoy your writing, and I'll talk to you later.